what is going on my friends got two pieces of equipment here what I'm about to do might either be really cool or it might be a fail so I'm wading out in the river here I saw something oh there's a goose saw something just a minute ago so right up here there, there are a couple of eels hanging out I've never seen that in this river I'm gonna see if I can catch them. If they are catchable. Whoa, that one took off. There's still one under here though. Got it, I got one. Look at that, I got an eel of some sort. Where'd the other one go? Doesn't look like it. Oh wait, there's a land. There's the other eel right there. Got him. Got the other one. Yes. There's two. Oh, I got two of them. And a bonus. Look at that, folks. A helgramite. That is good bait. Right there for smallmouth. I've actually never caught a fish. Oh, you know, it's good for trout too. I've actually never caught anything on a live Helgramite before. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. One Helgramite and two eels. Hmm. I think I might need to do some fishing. All right, my friends. So it is the next day. I kept the eels in here. Oh, and they are still alive and kicking. Excellent. Oh, does, do they not just look like fantastic bait. That is so cool. And then it just so happens that I bought these snake lures. I haven't even taken these out of the package, I haven't even put them in my tackle box. Got three colors there, these are from Savage Gear. Even though the green and the brown look the coolest, I think the best color is going to be this black. Yeah, the black snake I think is gonna be the juice today. Look at that, that is just super cool. All right, all rigged up there. Cool thing about the packaging is you can just slip it back in and I'm just gonna slide the lures back in the packaging for now when I, if I decide to like change colors, but uh, that's what it looks like on this bait caster with some 10 or 12 pound test, I think it is. It's such a beautiful morning out here. I'm excited. I wanted more time to be able to fish, so I waited till the next day. But I'm excited to try this little snake lure. Also got a spinning rod there for the eels. I think that'll be easier to cast them that way. Across the river. All right, I'm gonna set the eels there. I'm actually gonna first start off taking a few casts with the old snake here. First cast ever with a snake. Got him! Guys, got him! On a snake! My first snake fish! Oh, it looks. What is it? I think it's a bass. I just think. Oh, on a snake! Yeah, it's a smallmouth! I can see the dark. It's really dark smallmouth. <laughs> that was like what less than 10 casts. Look at that, my friends. My first snake fish. That is so cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is so cool. I may have found one of my new favorite lures here. <laughs> that is so cool. You can see how buoyant the snake is there. Smallmouth just, oh, almost got snagged in it again. Look at the action on this thing. Look at that. I mean, does that, talk about realistic. That is so cool. That smallmouth is a keeper. It wasn't a giant, 
but I can see how this could be like a big fish bait. Because, I mean, all you're going to get, I think, is keepers blowing this thing up. Watch, I'm going to get like an 8-inch or just absolutely <laughs> slay it. This thing is like half an inch under the surface. So sometimes on a long cast, you can't really see it. Got it! Came up! He, that one just slurped it. That one just slurped the snake. He's a snake slurper. Oh, it's a nice one. <laughs> oh, it's a nice one. I was like, my drag is peeling a little bit. Unfortunately, this is a silent drag, so you guys can't hear it, but... Oh, nice! <laughs> Another small one. Not as big as I thought. He was just fighting hard. Look at him! Wanted the snake. He slurped the snake. That is so neat. I need a picture of that. <laughs> that is just neat right there. Smally on a snake. So funny that every time a snake crosses this river, they're in danger. Oh, oops, oops. I scared a goose. Oh, they have a big nest. Sorry. Just walking by. Oh, that is cool. They are not happy. Look at that, guys. I thought, see, I saw some goslings, so I thought that this time of year was over, but apparently they're all different times. All right, I'm out here. That's so cool how the down keeps the eggs warm. All right, I'm going. I'm going. Woo. All right, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> uh, not a good idea to make your nest right in the middle of the trail. Oh, they have to be careful. Uh, there's a hole right there, some critter. I have to imagine geese are just ferocious. For a bird, they are absolutely <laughs> ferocious. I would love to see them like fight off an animal off their nest. I'll bet they I bet they wouldn't back down from anything. They're just like a bird with a, a lion personality. Alright, at this spot I've caught them before. Or I've caught one, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so I just have here a little bait hook with a split shot on the spinning rod. And I have a glove on this hand because th I don't know if these things are going to bite. And not that I can't take the bite of an eel, but it just weird freaks me out. These things are just plain weird oh he's sticking to the oh great this might be a theme of the day where he's like sticking to everything there you go oh he's all tangled up already that is crazy all right guys live eel i don't see why smallmouth wouldn't just smash that you know probably the reason why i don't see very many of these is the smallmouth just eat them all up a lot of ferocious smallmouth in this river and largemouth too the lot's funny because the largemouth are so much bigger than the smallies He's swim. Oh, he is swimming. He's absolutely taking off. I thought I had a fish on there for a second because the line was like going upstream. Whoa. What on earth is this? <laughs> That's crazy. Huge mushroom. Man, that looks edible. It's like a shelf mushroom or something. Oh, look, there's another one there. Gosh, that looks edible. Oh. Folks, look at this old fallen over tree. Huh. You know what? I might have to get my mushroom book and come back to this. All right, my friends, I'm gonna actually leave the island. I wanna go to a spot where I can be a little higher up and see down in the water better and I don't have all these trees in my way. And I've got a fish right in front of me, some sort of sick fish. He's covered in scabs, poor thing. Huh. All right, so I've come to this spot where I can be a little higher up. And you can see it's kind of clear trees. It is a park, so maybe these fish, I see a smallmouth right there. These fish might be a little bit pressured, but maybe this eel will turn them on. Maybe when that little squiggly dude goes down there, they'll be like, whoa. You know, I also have that live Helgramite still that I could use. But look at look how this guy's trying to bite me. He's just like, Arr. boy, this is a wiggly creature. All right, 
See how this small mouth will react to an eel. Oh man, that eel is just so lively down there. It's crazy because the eel is, he looks perfect. Oh, now he's diving down. But he looks perfect. But the bass, I think these bass are just kind of educated. I think there's a small mouth hiding under this log over here. He's swimming over. He's swimming over. And the smallmouth turns away. Look at the eels on the top like a topwater. And the smallmouth is right under it. Oh, you guys have to see this. I might have to get an underwater camera out to show you guys the action on this thing. So you can't ask for better action on a bait or lure. And the eel did not tire. You can see the bass swimming up to it, then the bass turns away. The eel didn't seem to get tired. It was lively on every single cast. Look at, that is just, that is amazing. The bass should have been all over this. And I casted repeatedly to the bass, just thinking maybe he's a little bit stubborn. He needs time. But every time the, the eel drifted close, he'd come over to take a look he was very interested in it, but he never even opened his mouth like he was going to take a bite. He would just observe it um, from a few inches away. So that was that with the eel. You know, guys, besides the fact that these bass are pressured, this does cross my mind. I wonder if bass don't eat lampreys because lampreys are like a parasite. Um, that bass is interested, but I don't know if it's the pressure of this area or he's just not interested. I think I'm going to have to go... I have an idea. I have an, a different idea. All right, my friends. One last hurrah here. One last try. My dad suggested... Let me rig it up. So my dad suggested that I tie on a big old bobber and let it drift through the deep part of the river um, to see if I can get anything that way. Uh, yeah, there's a drop in the river out here. All right, come on. So I wanted to give the eel as long and fair a try as possible, and the bobber was a perfect presentation. It drifted right through all kinds of channels and deep holes, but I just could not score a bite. I think you're better off using a snake lure. My friends, the little wiggly eel has not gotten a single bite, and I'm wondering if fish just avoid them. You know, I'm gonna try a couple casts with the snake lure just to confirm, but it's looking like the snake lure is more effective than lampreys are. All right, you crazy looking snake lure. <laughs> Get a big old swamp donkey. This is such a big fish lure here, and they're big largemouth in here as well as big smallmouth. That's crazy, there's a barrel right here. Sink this and use this catfish cover. Huh. What an interesting idea found a free barrel what should I do with that guys give me some ideas let me know in the comments that might be cool to like it's metal like sink it for catfish bait this log looks sketchy I'll pass quickly under here whoa whoa big one did you see that take I don't know if I was looking at the bait quite when it attacked I was looking down at the water. Oh, just the ferociousness. Oh, it's an, oh no, shoot, that was a big, that was the biggest one of the day. That may have gone three. Of course, now they got off, may, it may have been four. Four and a half. All right, let's try to get down here. I got out of the river for a bit. To cut, just come down river. There's, there was a lot of mud. This looks good too. Oh, oh. Oh, look, there's one right there. Oh, did you see? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was crazy. I, I actually made a bad cast. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. Oh, come on. It's a big. The bass saw it. Come on. Yes! B 
big smallmouth on his snake. Guys, I could see him. So I made a stupid bad cast, but the smallmouth was sitting right there and he turned and he just darted right over. Like, like he saw the snakes um, falling out of the tree. And then I just had to give it one little shake and it came over and nailed it. That is so cool. Oh, I love trying new things, trying new baits. Um, yeah, the fish definitely don't want eels or don't want lampreys anyway. Oh, man. Wow. What a beast, too. That might be a female with eggs that's staging up to spawn. They're definitely not spawning yet, but uh, I don't see any beds, but we're going to let that roll go. Right, right. <laughs> Gave me a little present to end it. How cool is that? All right, my friends, I'm coming over here. This is a metal that I put out on purpose to try to attract snakes um, back here. And uh, what I'm gonna do with these lampreys, I'm actually gonna kill them because I don't want any like parasitic eels on my smallmouth back here. And I'm gonna put them in the freezer and I might use these like as cut bait for catfish because eels are usually oily. So they might be fantastic catfish bait. So y'all be on the lookout for a catfish on eels type video soon. <laughs> In the meantime, thank you guys for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.